Well, hello. Welcome to the Josie Show. Today, I am interviewing someone that I've known since literally her first breath on this planet, my sister. <laughs> she, When I was about 12, she was born and I was in the room. It was one of the most significant events of my life. She is also... This is the exciting news. She's also an artist. And because we're sisters and because we're artists, we talk a lot about art stuff. And yesterday when we were chatting, she was asking me some questions about an art business um, endeavor that she is, uh, that she's trying out. And I was like, you know, what we should do, we should film this. So hence, that's why um, we're filming right now. But first, um, I would love it, Corey, if you would talk a little bit about um, your art, what you make, and then we can talk a little bit about what kind of art you want to make. So what 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 do you make, Corey? <laughs> um, well, I'm a painter and a sculptor, and I um, kind of make these illustrative um, watercolor and ink paintings and also more like direct from life sometimes. And then I make textile sculptures, very large textile sculptures that are, um, some of them are currently in public parks or they are more um, installation work. Um, but what I wanted to talk to Josie about was my, this pet portrait business that I'm doing because part of my, some of my paintings are basically humans with animal heads. So then I started making pet portraits of people's pets as humans. Um, and they're really fun and unique and people love them. And I just want to talk to Josie about how to up my, how to one up it, make it a consistent business. A consistent business. Yes. And I, um, and you, and also, I, uh, I don't think you mentioned this, but Corey just moved from northern Minnesota, where we grew up, where she and her husband and kids had been living, um, down to the Twin Cities, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, where she is going to start going to school, art school, which is so exciting. And um, and so then, you know, I think, Corey, you'd been working lots of, you know, waitress jobs and whatever kind of, you know, side hustles you you could do up north. But now it's like, ooh, what if you could possibly not have to get that kind of job and sell some art instead, you know, to create that, that supplemental income while you're going to school and her husband's also going to school. So, um, so here, I'm going to just show everybody, this is a portrait of our cat needles that my sister made. It's kind of reflecty. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, that my sister made. So this is just an example of her super cool, her super, super cool work. And I'll throw a few more images up on the screen as we go here. So you can see the kind of work that she makes and it is highly appealing. And also pet portraits are, um, it's like a bottomless pit of potential sales because people love their pets and it's like especially a quirky pet portrait because it's just like you know showing the personality of their pets um but it does present some challenges because it's almost it would be strictly speaking commission based and commissions take some extra care both to get the commissions and then to deliver the commissions so one of the questions that i asked Corey um yesterday which we'll start with is and this is you know if you are an artist that's thinking about selling your work in particular thinking about doing commissions the question is um how many do you want to do so Corey, how many do you want to do how much are you charging for them well so i currently am charging 200 for a single pet and then 300 for two pets and then basically like I, I just did a four pet portrait and I charged 500. So I guess every pet was a hundred dollars more in on the um, same page on the same page. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if, I mean, separate pet each, they all started up $200. Um, however, I do kind of want an ideal price would be $300 because that, because it's original work. Um, so I'm curious if you think $300 is a, too much or um so or the, what are, what's the scale of the work well okay so i mean typically i do eight by ten 
which is like very frameable. Um, you can just buy a frame a target for that size and it's like cute and you can put it anywhere. Um, but I can do bigger. My, this four pet portrait is actually quite big. It's 16 by 20, um, just because there were so many pets and I would have had to squeeze them in so much. Um, do you want to see it? Yeah. <clears throat> That's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. Ah! Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. So I'm sure everybody who's watching can see how amazing Corey's work is and, um, and how saleable it is. So, um, so it sounds like she has, you know, sort of established some pricing that works because so far you've done a couple, you've launched like a, like a calendar, like I've got room for 10 pet portraits. Like, so, so tell us about that. How did that go? Yeah. I mean, so the first time last year, I guess probably in November I did, um, I think I opened up 10 spots and then I make, a, I made a Google form. So then people in the form after people purchase, then the form is right in the receipt for my website. And then people fill out the, um, they put pictures in and like fill out information about themselves or their pets, such as like, what are you into? And then these people are into dirt. They're into worm composting and like, um, um, queer life. So <laughs> I have the flag in there and then I have some dirt compost and, and worms. Dirt, okay. Worm let's see that. Let's see it again. Now that we know about the worms and the the, the rainbow oh look at that oh there's the dirt okay nice <laughs> love um, it love it okay and then, yeah so then usually people say some things and then um and then I try to put in basically it's just like ideas so that I can add crafts to make it weirder and funner weirder um, and funner yep so last year I launched 10 and then I had you bump me and then they all sold out within I mean six hours and then I actually, then I was, I mean, last year I ended up doing like 16 or more because I was also talking to people and a bunch of people were approaching me outside of Instagram. So I did a, a ton. And then there was a time, um, it was Christmas related. So people wanted them by Christmas and then it ended up getting really intense. Um, <laughs> Very intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this spring, I did another one where I, I dropped 10 and they all sold out as well in one day. And that wasn't even with a bump. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> um, and then uh, what I'm seeing is then people approach me through my website and they um, just ask me if I can do them. And then sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. But then if I can't, I always tell them when I am doing them and then usually those people buy them so do you, do you capture their contact information on an email list so I haven't started that but I am I just got a MailChimp <laughs> Corey um Corey is really probably mad at me because all I do is talk about that. <laughs> get an email list get an email list God, get an email list, especially for this kind of work, because beca because she is not offering these all the time. It's not like there's just an order form on her website, which I think is wise, actually. Um, because she's not offering them all the time, she needs to be able to capture those people that are curious about her work and would definitely want a pet portrait. And then they, since they can't get one that minute, they would be like, yes, tell me when you're offering it again. And then she can keep up with those folks and then even if they're not ready the next time Corey offers the pet portraits they're on the list until they leave and so then I think that is um that is for sure I you know I, all I do is talk about my email my email list and how important it is but it's the number one driver of any revenue I make from art or anything I sell so I think that I think the email list is so 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 important because it's like our corner of the web and it beats social media and it beats pretty much everything. So, um, so I'm glad you got a MailChimp, Corey. <laughs> Great <laughs> job. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> um, so, uh, so then, you know, Corey is doing what I think is like a really good idea of doing this like sort of cyclical, um, cyclical kind of thing where she, she releases, like, I'm, I'm opening up 10 port pet portraits this month. Um, and she might, 
in the future, you know, maybe she doesn't have that much time and she only wants to do five or maybe she can do more that month, or maybe she can offer, you know, she can, she can kind of decide how she wants to do that. It also is brilliant that she has the form in the purchase uh, the purchase process for the customer, because if once when you're doing a commission for somebody, um, there can be a lot of back and forth, which um, can just take a lot of time. And um, so if Corey knows what she needs, as far as like the photo of the animal and some like fun, quirky pet facts, um, then she can, she doesn't need to like communicate too much with the, the, uh, the collector. She can just be like, okay, I got everything I need in the form you know, here's, here's when it's due. So that, so that's really clever. You did that on Squarespace? Um, the form, yeah, I mean, my website Squarespace, the form is just Google Forms. Oh, you I send them to Google Forms. Okay. And I guess I just cool. have a link in my, in my receipt. I see. Somehow this woman just recently didn't ever see my receipt for my website. So I don't know what happened there. Usually it's really smooth. Oh, Okay. Um, so she's like, she didn't fill out the form somehow she missed it or she missed. Yeah. She just didn't, she didn't see the, I don't know. It must've gone to her um, spam track. or something. Spam. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then yeah, that so was, you had to follow up probably with that. And yeah, I mean, she yeah. was really on it. So she followed up with me. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah. It was Good. all fun. Yeah. And now I have all her information. And that does happen. I mean, commissions do require some handholding, you know, like we do have to, I find that there's just communication that has to happen back and forth with the, with the client. So the easier you can make it on yourself, the better. So I think Corey has a system that she's developing that works out really well. Okay. So now your question, what was your, what was your main question yesterday, Corey? Um, well, I mean, I guess I wanted to talk to you about pricing, but then I also just, I don't think I have enough followers to have a consistent, I mean, basically what I'm looking for right now is a consistent income of like maybe a drop every month or every other month of five portraits. And then that would make up my um, restaurant. Income. your restaurant wage yeah right so five portraits a month i mean that seems very 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 achievable even with a small um social following you have what about a thousand on instagram that's right yep um so uh, uh to make uh this consistent income and i think five is very very modest and for sure it could be a bigger business um than than five, but if that's what you want to do, then that's, then that's great. That's a great goal to have. And it's, you know, very, very achievable. The work is good. You've established that you can, that you can manage commissions and you know, the system. Um, and it seems like the price point could have some wiggle room, which we like, how long does it take you to do a single animal? Well, I mean, maybe three and a half hours, maybe four. I think like four. four is like probably the average. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that sounds to me like 300 or more is probably a good price, right. but I would incrementally raise it. So I would do two, I would do two things. Probably. Um, I would offer at least two sizes, possibly three sizes and radically ratchet up the price for the size. And, you know, yesterday Corey was mentioning how much easier it is to ship an eight by 10, which is not an incidental concern. You know, like when you're shipping works on paper, they're fragile. It, it, the bigger it gets, the, the more likelihood that that it, the original art could get damaged in transit. So, you know, so that is something that you have to at, pad in as an artist if you're not just handing over art to a person at a gallery, you know, if you're shipping art, you have to think about that. Um, so uh, what I would say is that you can incrementally raise the price. I always recommend um, you, you can go up in small amounts and you can go down in small amounts, but it's always better to raise your prices rather than drop your prices. But if they're, you know, if you go up to 275 and they're not selling, you know, then maybe it's like, well, let's try 249, you know, like, or Christmas special, you know, 249 for Christmas or whatever. Um, and then, and then the thing that the reason I like to have priced here is so then she could say, well, the eight by 10 is maybe the next, the next drop is 225 for the eight by 10. And then 
and, but there's also a nine by 12 and there's also a 16 by 20, you know, which is $900 or something. I mean, you'd have to like figure out the, you know, figure out what, it, what makes sense, but like a 16 by 20 original work on paper is a pretty big deal. It, t- it takes yeah. a long time to make and it takes uh, expensive materials and it takes some shipping, you know, um, uh, monkeying around, <laughs> you know, like it's a little bit complicated to ship. So it, it, it makes a lot of sense that that, that that becomes your Cadillac, you know, that becomes your very fancy product. And what that does is even if a lot of people wouldn't buy that very expensive product, when they see that price point, they're like, oh, well, there's the 225, there's the 435, and there's the 900, hmm, maybe the 435, you know, like, so then yeah. there's like a, there's a real affordable one, affordable, you know, it, so then, so then it helps with the psychology of the buyer. And then also people love their pets. Like people will buy a 16 by 20, $900 custom drawing, custom portrait of their pet because they love their pets and they love art and they, and Corey's drawings are so, um, are going to be such a conversation piece in any home. So everybody is going to want one clearly. Um, so I think that, you know, if you should at least give the people the opportunity to spend more money, even if, you know, even if you don't sell that mini, you know, it's like, make it worth your while, but give people the option because, who knows, you know, that could be a hot item. And then you only have to do two a month, (laughs) you know, like it changes. Right. So then, um, I would also, how, how active are you on, on the Instagram these days? Um, very unactive, very unactive. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So what, what I would do, do you have, did you document all the work that you have sold already? Yeah. So you have photos of all those for sure. Okay. So what I think would be so amazing, this is a genius idea. It's genius is I would take, um, the documentation of the, the work. So you've taken photographs of it. So you had, so even though it's all sold and gone, take that documentation plus the original source image of the animal of the pet and put them into a, um, vertical video for, for Instagram reels. And you could also put it on Facebook and a couple and TikTok and a couple other places. That's the great thing about all the vertical these days is you can send it everywhere. And so then, and I can help you figure out how to do that with still images, but it's very easy. You can do it in Canva and you can kind of like do like a zoom, you know, like here's, here's the pet and here's the art, you know, and then, and, and then maybe some details and there's all sorts of, it's very simple, simple kinds of, it would be like a 12 second video, you know, Mm, excuse me. I just, just had a little, I had some, um, smoothie for breakfast and it's, you know, kind of, uh, (laughs) interfering with my brilliant idea right now. But, um, so, uh, then since you have, you know, you have quite a few of those, it sounds like you have 20 or more of those past arts, you know, Yes. Yeah, so you have a lot. So then it wouldn't, you know, it'd take you maybe a couple hours to just put together these short videos showing here's the pet, here's the art. And that, that is going to be every, any, everything anybody needs. And then you use the, um, the, you know, do a little research on hashtags. So it's like pet portrait art of your dog or whatever. I don't know what's out there. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a, a robust amount of hashtags that will work for this. And then, um, and then post one of those, if you're not, especially if you're not using your Instagram for anything else, it's like, just post one of those reels every other day or however often, and then maybe intersperse your other work that you're doing your, cause now you're going to be, you know, working with all these, all the cool, um, shop spaces at the U. So you're going to have like tons of more work that's going to be, you're going to be developing, but I would focus, I'd say, I'd say do three posts of the um, pet portraits for every one of your other kind of art, because the idea here is to use Instagram to sell. And then you'd want to put in your, um, you'd want to add this to your, um, 
your handle, like you're on the main page, you, you have a little caption you can write about yourself and you can say, you know, um, sign up for pet portrait notifications or something, and then link it right to your email. So then, you know, say, you know, pet portraits are closed, but opening September one or, you know, whenever you want to, and then say, you know, get an email when pet portraits open again, you know, and then, um, and then, so then people who are interested that you capture them and they are on your list and you could even like, there might even be some little bonus that you could send them, but we can talk more about that, but it's like, it could be like 10% off or add an extra animal for free or something like that, you know, like with this coupon and something because mm -hmm. you want to capture them because they're, what they're doing, what's happening is most people just forget. They see something that they love. And they maybe even save it in their Instagram or they save, they save it to their computer if they run across a website and then they just forget because there's no urgency, you know? So you as the artist need to create the urgency right. and the way, and you also need to remind them of how awesome your idea is and how awesome it will, how awesome they will be when they make get when they buy this pet portrait for their wife who loves the cat you know like and how excited she is going to be you know it's, it's about them it's about the buyer you know and so you are just like putting yourself back into their like oh yeah that's right there's that artist that makes those awesome pet portraits you know so it's top of mind kind of thing and then just keep cycling reels is so powerful right now um and just keep cycling those reels you know of um of the original of the pet you know do some sort of like morphing um transition which i can show you how to do it's super easy and um and that and then just you know make sure it's consistent so you want to make sure that you're you know if you only could do three a week just make sure it's consistent i just talked to a facebook um a meta expert a, a employee anytime facebook is willing to talk to me i'm like okay tell me everything, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so this lady, she's a meta, a meta person. She was, we were talking mostly about Facebook, but she said that the algorithm for Facebook and Instagram is most pleased when we're consistent. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with volume. It more has to do with like, can you hit the same time of day and the same time of week? So it's like post 9am on Tuesdays, 9am on Fridays, 1 p.m. on Sundays, and that's your regular post cycle, and the algorithm really likes it. And if you can do more than that, then you should. But you know, that is that's my thought. And then I don't know what you have on the main page of your website, but it should be centrally, your pet portraits should be central, or you should have a landing page from your Instagram that goes directly to pet portraits. Cause I know you do other stuff, you know, so your your other fine artwork is important as well. So you could have like a, you know, your Insta page can go to, you know, Corey Steckelberg at dot com slash pets or something. And then that's where people land when they, you know, from the Insta. Can you tell us what all your handles are and your website and all the things so people can find you? Um, well, um, I go by Wolf Helm. So my Instagram is wolf.helm and that's spelled W-U-L-F dot h e l m and then my website is just wolfhelm.com yeah, or wolf you can find me with my name Corey Steckelberg okay well thanks so much for talking to me sister thank you for I all really liked help. it <laughs> it was fun <laughs> it was super fun and I can't wait to see what happens it's going to be amazing same okay <laughs> <laughs> bye love bye. you <laughs> <laughs>